A father's journey beyond, playing with his daughter in heavenly splendor. Allow me to express my unwavering commitment as a longtime fan of your channel. Over time, I've avidly listened to captivating stories from various individuals that brim with inspiration. These narratives have sparked a desire in me to share my own story in this growing collection. Please bear with me, as my story may touch on moral lessons, but I assure you it's not meant to be preachy. Let's rewind to 2003, a time when my life was filled with dreams. I had a loving wife, a sweet daughter, and a successful career. Within two years at my current job, I climbed the corporate ladder and was on the verge of becoming a junior vice president. It was a life that many would envy. However, the disastrous year of 2008 brought about a colossal calamity. Despite my innocence in the Lehman Brothers debacle, I suffered the consequences. Engaging in financial endeavors beyond my means led to foreclosure and the loss of my home to the unforgiving hands of the bank. Losing my job and home pushed me into deep despair. My wife and daughter became my unwavering support as we moved from our million-dollar residence to my parents' guesthouse with a significant decline in income. In 2008, tragedy struck again. My wife and daughter lost their lives in a car accident while my wife was picking up our daughter. State troopers and medical examiners delivered the devastating news and my world crumbled. The aftermath set off a relentless downward spiral. Seeking relief from grief, I turned to substances for an escape. With no guiding light after losing my family, I embraced various self-destructive behaviors, sinking deeper into addiction. In 2010, during a tumultuous bender, a peculiar sensation took hold of me. A dull ache beneath my jaw and creeping numbness in my arm fueled a morbid anticipation, an opportunity to reunite with my loved ones. In a recliner, ready to embrace death, an enigmatic experience unfolded. Instead of tunnels or welcoming parties, darkness engulfed my senses, leaving me in an unsettling void. Disillusionment set in as expectations collided with the harsh reality of this desolate expanse. This must be the afterlife, I murmured, my words reverberating through the emptiness. I resigned myself to the solitary odyssey within this boundless void where temporal markers were non-existent. Eternity unfolded as I traversed the desolation, with only the echoing footsteps of isolation as my companion. Surrender became my solace over time, enveloped by the heavy shroud of belief that nothing awaited me on the distant horizon. Despite crying out to my wife and daughter with words filled with love and longing, the shadows of hopelessness loomed large. From the abyss emerged an unfamiliar voice, neither malevolent nor jubilant, incessantly questioning, you, who have defiled your own body, why do you think you deserve to leave this place? My timid inquiry, who's there? Only elicited the repetition of the initial question. My response, stripped of embellishments, acknowledged my lack of worthiness and attributed the suffering to self-inflicted wounds born of ignorance. The entity's identity remained shrouded in ambiguity, its demeanor persisting in an apathetic course. Are you ready to be judged? Interjected the enigmatic voice, propelling the narrative forward. In response, a vibrant luminosity enveloped the vicinity surrounding the faint glimmer, thrusting me into an immersive tableau. The chronicle of my life, meticulously rendered in high-definition detail, unfurled before me, commencing from the day of my birth and culminating with my eventual demise. Within the tapestry of my existence, a seminal childhood moment unveiled itself, a trivial act of thievery at the tender age of seven, snatching a mere five-cent piece of Bazooka Joe bubble gum from the aisles of 7-Eleven. This pivotal moment served as a harbinger, introducing a recurring theme of deception and betrayal that would thread its way through my life's narrative. The life review froze at the moment my wife welcomed our daughter into the world, an event I missed due to work commitments. A melancholic montage highlighted my perpetual neglect and distraction due to my demanding job. I witnessed the missed precious moments with my daughter's laughter and romantic dinners with my wife, all culminating in the chilling scene of me in that lifeless recliner. Breaking the silence, an enigmatic voice asked, What do you have to say? With a heavy heart, I confessed my remorse and self-loathing, shedding the facade of moral rectitude. My apologies flowed, invoking divine clemency and the names of God and my departed loved ones. After my emotional release, the entity disclosed its origin, declaring, Your pleas have reached my father. 
Before me stood a figure resembling Jesus, offering a fresh start. I humbled myself, kissing his feet. With authority he instructed me to stand, and through my teary eyes, I saw Jade. Apologies flowed as we embraced, the joy of reconciliation filling the air. Running with my precious child, I found solace in a moment I wished would never end. Facing a horizon, I reunited with Donna. Embracing her, I expressed my remorse. As time passed, Jesus made a decree, and the possibility of departure emerged. I begged for more time, but Jesus assured me that my family's presence would forever bless my existence. An electrifying sensation enveloped my chest, symbolizing our enduring bond. Returning to consciousness, I found myself surrounded by a medical team. They bombarded me with questions. What's the date? Where are you? Who is the President of the United States? In the following days, Revelations painted a poignant picture of my mother's pivotal role and her harrowing discovery. Medical updates spoke of arteries, one completely blocked, the other 40% obstructed. While the lack of oxygen had affected my cognition, assurances persisted that time would aid the healing process. I won't claim an immediate transformation after my near-death experience. My story attests to the slow, challenging climb from the abyss, a reclaiming of self. Immersed in my local church community, I moved toward baptism, my spirit awakened by accepting Jesus as my Savior. A testament to unwavering faith and the support of my spiritual family, my sobriety endures a decade later. If I may offer wisdom, spend time with your children and shower them with love. Despite the demands of work, cherish the precious moments of family connection, learn from my path. The pain I carry will persist, but I have faith that Donna and Jade await my eventual reunion. Longing to stay, God granted me a second chance, an undeserved redemption, with gratitude to all who witness, my story comes to an end. Please share your thoughts in the comments as shared experiences illuminate the complex facets of life. Until we meet again, may providence keep you safe and blessings grace your journey.